beautiful people. Welcome to my channel if you're new. If you're not, then welcome back, I guess. You might think I look a bit different, I've got my glasses on, because I thought it makes me look like I know what I'm talking about more. I don't know, I just always feel smarter with glasses. Today I'm going to do an in-depth, deep analysis into what makes the best everyday elevated natural makeup. That's a mouthful. I made it through. Recently, I've been getting quite a few compliments on how my makeup's been looking, which is always lovely. I love it when someone compliments my makeup and like, yes, I did a good job today. I believe it's because I've picked up a few tips and tricks from celebrity makeup artists when I've been working with them to create the best makeup look for you. If you want all the tips and tricks, all the knowledge, glasses add to the knowledge, of course. I keep watching. I will actually take the glasses off now because they're not very practical when doing makeup. <laughs> they added to the effect. I have broken this down into sections of your base, cream products, powder products, eyes, so forth, to make it more digestible for you watching, and just a bit easier, more organized. I've literally laid out all my products so I don't miss any steps, as I feel like I always forget something when I'm filming. Firstly, the base. This is so unbelievably important. I've never been on set when a makeup artist hasn't spent at least 30 minutes prepping my skin. A product that lots of makeup artists use and that I love that went viral everywhere is oily skin food. So I've got dry skin, which is why it's great for me, but maybe if you have oily skin, you might want a lighter weight, maybe a water-based moisturizer rather than a very thick cream. I don't think there's any detail too much into an applying moisturiser. Kind of, I focus it mostly on my cheekbones, but it is just putting it everywhere. There's no real method. For primer, I mean, when you're painting a house, you always use primer before painting, so you've got to do the same for your face. I use the Morad primer, which is a pore correcting one, so I actually use two. I use this in my T-zone area, so like on my chin, and like just underneath my eye area here. I will go in with the Ciate Dewy, Dewy? Is it Dewy or Dewy? I never know. But this one, and I'll put that on like my cheekbones and where I want to be glowy. I'll lightly apply that over areas where my pores are mostly visible. So if that's different for you, then apply where you think is needed. I'll put a similar amount of the Ciate one also on the back of my hand, like so. This time, applying it to the high points of my face. This might seem really extra to some people and be like, oh my god, why is she doing so many steps, please? It just makes your makeup sit so much better on your skin and also use less makeup products because your skin's already in a good place to start with, if that makes sense. And it's also like the saying, what's the saying that builders use? Measure twice to do once. That is definitely wrong. Right, the last step for the base is my tinted SPF. I use the Bondi Sands one. I count it as skincare, but some people might count it as makeup. The palm still on the base, yeah. Grab a drink, because this is a long video. If you're doing makeup with me, then even better. That was fun. So I just pop this between my fingers, and then apply it. Why am I still holding onto the bottle like this? <laughs> if you watched my beauty secret video, then you'll know how much I love tinted SPF, and how much I think it just changes the game. Like, look, do I know how bronzier and glowier and mm, love it. You'll be happy to know we've now finished with the base and it's time for makeup. So I use two different concealers. I don't use foundation. I think for an everyday look, you can just add coverage where needed. If you love wearing foundation, that makes you feel confident, absolutely go for it. But if you just prefer a minimal base, then concealer will do the job. When looking at your face, it's so important to know that obviously you're not all one color. So even though I hate like a really, really bright under eye, I will go slightly lighter than my complexion just to lift that area. And then I get a more skin toned one for the rest of my face. And see where discolorations are, and that's where you'll focus most of the product. And that will help it to not look cakey and not over applied and have a flawless, flawless base, which you all want at the end of the day. I'm firstly taking the L'Oreal La Touche, La Touche Magique concealer underneath my eyes. And then I'll take the Gucci concealer, put it in areas where I'm discolored. So for me, that's around my nose. I go very red for some reason. And then on my chin, and just kind of areas, I know I've got a few blemishes here. I'm doing this without a mirror, so I just kind of, I know my, I feel like I know my face that much. Quite a fun thing. No, it's in the sense of I just do this every day, so I begin to notice where I put concealer most. And then we let it sit for a bit. Concealer needs some time to set for the product to stay where it is. 
because then you get more coverage out of it rather than blending it straight away thinking oh my god it's all gone away and then adding more and then it gets cakey and then it's just a hot mess and mm, avoid skip delete no we don't want that so just let it sit let it sit for a bit i will use a tiny teeny tiny brush to blend it this allows me to have more control when blending it all together i have just gone away and blended that in the mirror now it's all blended you can see it's just added a great layer of coverage but not taking away from my natural skin bloody bloody blah i will come back to it i'm not finished completely with concealer yet but i want to do all my creams first i use cream products and then go in with powder just because one i think it lasts a lot longer as you're layering products onto your face and two it adds a really beautiful dimension because you're using two different formulas, two different tones, it just makes it look more natural because obviously your skin's got so many different colours and so many different pigments and that's why it's important to replicate that when doing your makeup. So we're on to cream blush. I have been absolutely loving the Hel Elf, <laughs> Elf, I've been loving Elf, the Elf Halo Glow. What shade are you in? Tube? No. <laughs> I read tube because of the tube, it's not shade tube, it's shade magic hour. Anyway, silly, dumb moment there from Lauren. A great tip I've learned, and I've seen lots of makeup artists do this, is always applying creams on the back of your hand first, because it just gives you so much more control and placement of the product. Oh my God, I've just applied a lot. Oopsies. <laughs> what was I saying? The placement of blush and bronzer can really, really, really change your makeup. I'm going to briefly touch on the undertones here as this is where you need to find the undertone that suits you. With complexions, you'll either lean more cool toned or warm toned. Different blushes will suit your complexion based on that fact. So I've got quite an olivey, warmish undertone. And this isn't to do with the shade of your skin, by the way. So it's, not, it's not whether you've got dark skin or light skin. It's about the undertone, the underpigment. That's why I love this color, as it's got quite a warm, ready, orangey undertone, which just suits my complexion the most, I believe, and also helps to bring out the green in my eyes, which I'll touch more on when I do eyeshadow. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. I will place that very lightly onto the tops of my cheekbones, building up products slowly. So always start by applying just a little bit and then you can always add more. But what you don't want to end up is when you're like, you know, I've, we've all been there where you've just applied a big dollop and you're like, oh my God, how, how am I gonna get rid of this? It just creates stress. No one likes makeup stress. I've been there when you're getting ready for a night out and it's not going well, the worst. So that's how to avoid it. That's all lovely and blended now, if I do say so myself. I love a sun-kissed look. So I always take a bit on the forehead and on my nose because that's really where the sun actually hits and that's what will give you that effect. But say if you want to look youthful, then applying it like right on your apples of your cheeks can really add that effect. That's kind of my in-depth analysis on blush. Next, we've got cream bronzer. So I love the Chanel, Solid Tan de Chanel bronzer. This has also got a lovely, beautiful, ready undertone, which is why I love it. But if you're cool toned, you might want to find one that's got a cooler undertone, so maybe like a bit more of a blue hint. So I take the product. Mine's gone really grim, and I don't know why. It's kind of like balled up. I think it's when like, the brush hairs get in it. So I take the product, and then I warm it up and blend off the excess on the back of my hand before going in. Kind of tap this into my cheekbones to lay down the product, and then blend upwards. So I take this around my forehead, and on my jaw. The key with anything with makeup is if you think you've blended enough, you can blend more. That's, that's what I live by. All the cream products are blended and this takes me on to a little step that I absolutely love doing, which is using a setting spray to merge all the cream before going in with powders. This just makes sure everything's blended lovely and seamless in your skin, that it appears like skin when obviously it's not as makeup. But only me and you need to know that. I love the Lisa Eldridge Skin Enhancing Mist. This is incredible because it's got skincare ingredients within it and it's just great. It doesn't remove your makeup, it helps it stay and just blend everything in. So I'd shake that up, always, and I'll take a little sponge, this is the Real Techniques one, and just spritz it on. I'm going back for the underarm technique. It works. I'll just kind of squeeze it into the sponge and then tap in very gently. I sometimes notice that they kind of do like a tap roll the tap roll yeah tap roll method when 
blending with a sponge. I think that works really, really lovely. I kind of go over the areas where I put the concealer on one side and then the other side I'll go in on the bronzer and the blush. It's now time to set it all into place because we don't want to be a seal. A <laughs> seal. A bit like, like a slippery, slippery mess. So I don't know why a seal came to my head. I've got the Givenchy Prism Libra Powder. This is incredible because I don't know if you can see it's got like four different colours. It will help to colour correct your skin at the same time as setting it, which is why I love it. I'll take a very, very little brush, I'll get a bit of product, and then I always tap away the excess in the lid. One thing I've just noticed from makeup artists is they use so little, yeah, such little amount of powder. It's like a big trend, and I and I do it when I'm going out, and I'll get like a big, like the Trigwell Cosmetics Powder Puff and bake and set and everything. But on every single set, they've barely like dusted my face with powder so for every day now I do the same. Go into my t-zone and then also of course underneath my eyes. This is just where you set anywhere that you naturally get shiny first or need a little help in the department of it staying on and not forming lines. I'll also go over like this area as well for me. And I'll also set my blush and bronzer. I get a shade that's very similar to the blush I use. This is the L'Oreal Blush of Paradise. I don't know if you can see, it's just again, got that warm, it's slightly lighter, but it's in the same undertone realm as the e.l.f. one. This is in the shade, what shade are you in? Life is a peach. And then I'll go in with a red, uh, e can't open it, but the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, the bronzer in this is also just a beautiful, warm, bronzy colour goodness. I'll just go and apply those where I put the others. I've just set the creams into place. I love using powders on top of creams because it helps add the colour back because you know how much I love blending and sometimes I feel like I blend it all the way. We've all been there when we've done our makeup and we look in the mirror and we're like, I don't notice a difference. That's why I love doubling up with creams and powders because it still looks so natural as you're doing very minimal layers and building it up but you still get a lovely colour. Right, we are nearly there, I promise you, I promise you we're the end. You're probably fed off me speaking by now. <coughs> oh, I had a little tickle in my throat. For eyeshadow, that came out really weirdly, for eyeshadow. I use the Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat Palette. This palette for green eyes is gorgeous. The tones, the colours, I've got it in my finger. And now I've got eyeshadow on my hand. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, it's just, it's just sensational. This is where another makeup theory comes into play. I'm going to introduce to you the colour wheel theory. I don't know if you've heard of it. Maybe, maybe not. But basically, depending on your eye colour, the colour that will bring out your pigment in the eyes is the one that's opposite on the colour wheel. For greens, it's like your reds, your purples, those blues, it's like your oranges. Browns, like some blues will look lovely. That isn't to say that you have to use that colour in particular, it's more finding shades with that undertone. Bringing it back with the undertone. The undertones are so important. For instance, if you've got quite cool toned brown eyes, a lovely cool toned brown will look incredible or a cool toned blue will look insane. Whereas if you've got warm colour brown eyes, that was a mouthful, then you want to stick to more orangey browns and reddy browns. That's why, hence, I'm going in with the shade Hot Spell, which is this one here. It's like a lovely neutral. And then for the eyeliner, I'll use this one. But I'll show you what I do. I tap in, and then of course, always tap off the excess. And I'll start by patting it onto the eyelid to deposit most of the product. And then I'll take the remainders and really just blend into the crease. And I'll always kind of bring it into this sort of shape. I'm doing this all from muscle memory because again, no mirror. This is a skill in itself. I'm blending it to sort of a point, a nice diffused point. I never want it to be too harsh. I want to have quite like a diffused line. That's why using a fluffy brush is perfect for it because it will help blend any harsh lines out. But the reason I love going into like a pointed shape is because it helps lift the eye and give you those cat's eyes, you know, that everyone wants. I also drag it underneath my waterline. Some people love underneath the eyes, some people don't. This is a very personal thing. I love it, I think it brings out my green more because it's like the colour all over, but again, very personal. I feel like that's all lovely and blended. I also sometimes go with my concealer brush and buff out the edges just to make sure it's really nicely blended in the shape I want. Never be afraid to go back in. So many times makeup artists 
you know, apply too much product somewhere and then just blend it out. It happens to everyone. And also, a thing I've noticed is I used to always feel really guilty. No, guilty's not the right word. Oh, sorry, what am I looking for? I just used to feel bad about myself when I'd spend hours doing makeup, I'd take a photo or someone would take a photo on the night out and it would look awful. And I was like, I didn't do that, that's not me. But it happens on set. They'll spend, you know, two hours doing makeup. This is why also, if you think it's extra doing this all for you every day, trust me, I sit in the makeup chair for an hour for the most minimal look because they just spend so much time on perfecting the blending. So we're gonna do the same. I'll go on to set, they'll take the photos and then they'll see something in the camera that you couldn't see to the naked eye and then they'll just go in and fix it. So before going on a night out, you can always just test it with like a back flash of your camera or get someone to take a photo just to make sure there's nothing that you don't see that's in the camera because honestly, it happens to literally everyone. Right, we're now going on to eyeliner. Don't get me wrong, I love a black smoky eye, but for every day, I like to keep it quite minimal. A few makeup artists have done this on me and every time they've done it, I've absolutely loved how it looked. So now I've just stolen it and used it for my everyday. Oh, I had like a little, in a burp, charming. So yeah, I used the purpley shade because that is what is opposite to my color because I've got green eyes. If, if you don't know, I forgot if I said already. On top of the excess, and what I'll do is pat it onto place, but really just focusing it in a small line just above the lash line. Can you see? This basically just thickens your eyelash line without appearing like you've got eyeliner on. I don't know the full science behind it, but I just love the way it looks. Oh yeah, I'll just do that and then kind of blend it out a tiny bit, not really creating much of a wing, but just a bit of definition to the eye. So deposit the product first and then blend. I'm not even joking, I just put my product down. I came back and I smacked my head against this corner. So I'm in pain. If I forget things, I've now got concussion. Yeah, it still really, really hurts, but we're gonna power through. This might help to cool my head, actually. I go back in with the Skin Enhancing Mist once all my powders are in place, and before mascara, because you don't need mascara to smudge, I just give a nice spritz. This will help merge. I should not have been talking whilst I'm buying that. But this will help merge all the products in, and I'm just going with a little lovely fan. Love a fanning moment. Ta-da! And now we're going on to mascara. I have just curled my eyelashes, a fun fact about this is I would always just doop doop done and then as I was on set I realised they really spent a lot of time curling eyelashes and I was thinking why are they doing this and of course it's just you want to give the best base for whatever you're applying so by curling them into the place that you want them to first makes applying mascara 10 bajillion times easier so yeah really really make sure that you've curled them into the exact place you want before going in I'm using it the Lancome Hypnostrama Mascara. I love this stuff. When I take it out, I'll always wipe the excess off onto the tube. This just makes it a thinner coat when applying because you can always build it up, as we know from our bronzer and blush. Just applied the mascara and then a little, another little good trick I love doing. Getting a clean spoolie, so I've literally just got my brow pencil. And whilst it's still wet, you can just go through and brush your eyelashes into the place you want. It gets rid of clumps, makes them go the direction you want, and so they're not everywhere looking like a mess. It's where I've got least of my tricks because I don't fill my brows in, so I can't help with that department, but I can help with fixing them into place, making them look fluffy and good. I'll take the same spoolie and I'll brush them for like a solid two minutes. I think sometimes your eyebrows, I don't know about you, but mine can be so unruly, and they just need a little help just all falling into place. And by keeping brushing them, you will help them naturally go into that place. And then after finishing brushing, I'll go in with the got to be eyebrow and hair gel. I will again wipe off the excess. And then I'll start by going backwards. This just gets all the product into your brows, coats every single hair. From there, you can go and brush them into place. I'll go over like once or twice. And then I'll go back in with the spoolie just to really fix them into the exact placement you want. We finally nearly made it. You've made it all the way through to the lips. We're back in, back in with our old friend, the undertones. But again, I stick to shades that are similar to my blush and bronzer in my eyes just to make it all blend and merge together, as we know. The 17 Soft Liner. Lovely. The Lisa Eldridge Lip Gloss in Muse, which is just a lovely, lovely shade. Your lips can be uneven, so this is where you can fix it with an eyeliner, an eyeliner, please. No, this is a lip liner. Yeah, just go ahead and uh, 
apply that outside. The lip liner applied. I like creating quite a thick line because I like the colour to kind of really show through before going in with a layer of gloss. A great trick for lips is, I didn't mention it at the beginning, but apply lip balm at the start to do your makeup so that when it comes onto your lips, their lovely moisturiser already and plump the, the lip products. And this will help blend the lip liner in and look gorgeous. But yeah, this is my finished everyday elevated natural makeup with all of my tips and tricks. I thought this is a really, really long video, so it might have felt like a marathon at some point to watch it, but I hope you've learned a lot and taken some takeaways. Taken some takeaways? Yeah. Chinese takeaway? Indian takeaway? Who knows which type of takeaway? <laughs> but yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to check out my other videos, which can give some more inside beauty tips, or even just a bit of my day-to-day -day life of what I do when I'm on set modeling. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.